So ever since I started backpacking and through hike to the Appalachian Trail, I've always been super, I don't want to say obsessed, but I've always been really into really ultralight gear because when I backpack and through hike, I really prioritize doing a lot of miles. A lot of hikers prioritize different things, but I wanted to go as far as I could and therefore I wanted as little weight on my back. So. When I was really thinking about ultralight gear, I of course wanted very ultralight tents. So that's what we're talking about today. I have the Z-Pax Duplex tent and the Z-Pax Plex Solo, which to my knowledge is the most ultralight one and two person tents on the market that are fully enclosed. So let's talk about those guys. So I have different levels of experience with both of these tents. This duplex I bought years ago, I think in 2019, and I carried it for my through hike attempt in 2020, which was 300 miles. And then I carried it for most of my through hike on the AT in 2021. Um, I carried it from Georgia to, I think, Massachusetts. And honestly, I only slept in the tent about half the nights because I'm a huge fan of hostels. The Plex Solo is a much newer tent, so I got it this year and I've brought it on most of my overnight trips. So I only have a handful amount of nights in that tent, but I feel like I got a good enough experience to let you know my real feelings about that. So behind me I have the duplex and I have the plex solo both set up. They're both considered tension tents so you use your trekking poles to set them up instead of your typical tent poles. They're both single wall tents made out of a DCF material. They're fully enclosed and they have the bathtub floor. A lot of people say single wall tents isn't as great for condensation and that happens a lot no matter what tent you carry. But the way that these tents are set up, the condensation on the inside kind of goes down the slope of the tent and any moisture can drip into this mesh part of the tent between the bathtub floor and the walls. So that's kind of a neat feature on these tents. Something I'm not super crazy about with the design of these tents is that the trekking pole goes right in the middle of the door. So it's not a very wide entrance that you have to get into the tent. You kind of have to go around the trekking pole on one side, but that's something that I've gotten used to. Both of these tents come in a variety of different colors and with the different colors are different weights of the DCF. So some tents weigh less, some tents weigh more. Both of these, I have the blue and the white, they're both the most light color options that they have. So since these are pretty lightweight tents, some people are concerned with the durability of it. The bathtub floor, I feel like, is very durable. I don't use a ground sheet with either of them, but the walls are thinner. I've had the duplex for a lot longer, so I've had a couple holes. One of the holes was from my cat when I found him sleeping under the tent and I tried to grab him. He kind of clawed, so that was my fault. And then I've found one other hole but z -Packs always includes repair tape, so it's really easy to patch up the hole if you do find one, but so far they've held together pretty well. Because they are single wall tents, I feel like it's a much more simple design. You don't have a separate rain fly and a body to worry about, but the downfall about these types of tents that I have noticed is that you can't move them as easily. So if you set up your tent and then afterwards you realize that it's on a root or it's on a little bit of a slant, you gotta take the whole tent down and move it. Whereas freestanding tents, you can just kind of pick the whole tent up and move it over after it's already set up. So that's definitely a compromise you have to make when you go for these lighter weight tension tents. So keep that in mind. Make sure it's a really good tent site before you set up these tents and always look above to make sure there's no dead branches. We call those whittle makers. All right, now let's take a closer look at the duplex. This is a two-person tent. You need two trekking poles to set it up. There's two vestibules, there's two doors, and it's very roomy inside. It's a two-person tent that I use by myself, and I love the extra space to lay out all my gear. Having the two doors and the two vestibules in this tent is such a nice feature because if it's a nice night, you can 
roll up both of the vestibules like I have right now and that allows the air to go right through the tent. That's going to help with condensation, that's going to give you a breeze if it's really warm out. I always thought a huge benefit of having double wall tents is that you can sleep without the rain fly so you can look up and look at the stars. But in this one you might not be able to look up but you still have a lot of visibility and you can see all around you. So I'm sitting on my sleeping pad just so I can show you how much space is actually inside the tent. You can see I have a lot of room above my head. I don't feel crammed at all. There's plenty of space to organize my gear, pack up my backpack, change, and that's something I really like about being a solo hiker in a two-person tent. And since there's two trekking poles holding up this tent, the headspace goes all the way across. So as long as you're sitting in the middle or kind of close to the middle, you won't bump your head on the walls at all. And you can see when I lay down on the sleeping pad, I have extra room by both my feet and my head. So I'm a huge fan of this tent. At only 19 ounces, I feel like you can't beat that with a two-person tent. But a lot of people have a problem with the price tag because it comes in at $699. So this is the Plex Solo tent. It's the one person tent. You need one trekking pole to set it up. And actually I have a ski pole on it right now because my second set of trekking poles is actually in my car, which is at the shop. But this works out perfectly. It's the right height. And this tent just has the one door instead of having a door on each side. So that's not as good for airflow. And the couple nights that I have been in this tent, I have noticed condensation. But again, that's super common with any tent that you take out hiking. I was always super unsure about one person tents. I was always under the impression that they'd be way too claustrophobic and I wouldn't have enough space. So. I was a little hesitant before I got this tent, but as soon as I set it up and went inside, I was actually really surprised how much room it was. I thought it would only be big enough to just fit your sleeping pad and you'd need to put your backpack on the outside of the tent, but that's not the case. So when I set up my sleeping pad, there's actually room right to the side and it's a space big enough to fit my backpack and some of my gear and clothing. So unlike the duplex, the door to this tent is actually shorter when I'm sitting which isn't as convenient. You really have to duck a lot getting into this tent. I'm sitting straight up and the camera's at eye level and you can see it's, it's short. So because this only has one trekking pole, the headroom is gonna be the greatest if you're sitting right next to the trekking pole because there it starts going down and really slanting to the ground. So as long as you sit in the middle and you sit by the trekking pole, you have headroom. So I found myself when I had much longer hair and I would wear it as a bun on top of my head, I would oftentimes have to take the bun out because that would add a lot of height onto my head and it would hit the top of the tent a lot if I moved to the side at all. Again, lots of room by my feet. And again, there's still space above my head and behind my head. And here you can see how much space the sleeping pad takes up and just how much space next to the sleeping pad there is. Definitely enough for a backpack and more gear spread out right there. This tent has a slightly better price. It's $100 cheaper than the duplex, so it's $599. So the question is what tent do I like more? And I think I like them both for different situations. I think the main difference is I would rather go for the Z-Pax duplex if I'm doing more of a social backpacking trip. So when I did the AT with Cody, he also had a Z-Pax duplex. There were so many times that we would set up our tents next to each other and it was really easy to like talk and hang out while we were each in our own tent. And I don't think that would be as easy if I had that tent because like I said, once you see sit up, you can't really see out the door, and it's just not as open as the duplex. And also if you're doing more of a social backpacking trip, you're probably spending more time at camp, so that's going to be nicer just having a little extra space for that. If I'm doing a solo backpacking trip, once I set up my tent and do all my camp chores and go in, I'm just in my tent for the rest of the night. I'm just laying down, I'm watching videos on my phone, I go right to sleep. So there's not as much hanging out happening when I'm by myself. So I would go for the Plex solo if I'm alone and the duplex if I'm hanging out with friends. If you're taking a dog backpacking with you, it's definitely possible to fit the dog in the Plex solo, but I would 100% take the duplex if I was taking a dog because that extra space 
is going to change everything. The Z-Pax website says the duplex is 18 and a half ounces, but when I bought that in 2019, I could have sworn the website said 21 ounces, so maybe they've made improvements to make it lighter. The Z-Pax website says that the Plex Solo is 13.9 ounces, so that's the weights for you. So I still really like both of these tents and I'm still gonna take both of them out backpacking with me as well as my Big Agnes Tigerwall UL2, which is my semi freestanding tent, which is at home. I just get in different moods when I backpack. I take a different tent um, for different occasions or just really just what I feel like putting in my backpack when I wake up that morning. So all three tents are still in my setup, still use pretty regularly. So this has been my very impromptu gear review slash comparison of these two tents. They still work very well for me. I think Z-Pax does make really good tents. I know this review isn't as specific as other gear reviews on YouTube where they show you the exact measurements and everything, but if you want to get the exact anything, the links are in the description to check that out. So let me know what else you want to see on this channel. I will do some backpacking trips and some long day hike and peak bagging trips in New Hampshire soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! And with that, it just started raining, so good time to wrap up this video.